Welcome into the Film Guy Network. It's football season, which means I've got a film study for you. gentlemen welcome into the film guy network um i'm brooks austin uh I, I don't know why i just did that most of you guys are are well aware of who i am that's why you're here um it is a tuesday here on the network and we do a lot of what to expect nowadays behind a paywall it's over on patreon.com forward slash brooks austin however there is a top 10 matchup coming to the city of athens this weekend and it is uh by way of uh, an offense in Ole miss that I'm extremely fascinated in. So we're not only going to do a public what to expect here available for you on YouTube. We're also going to be doing multiple episodes over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. The link is in the description of this video. So if you like anything that you're seeing today, I promise you there's loads more over there on Patreon. So make sure you're joining us. There's a discord over there as well with a big family that loves to talk Georgia football and football in general. So if you're one of those people that want to join, Run over there, patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. We are here today to talk a little bit about this Ole Miss football team in general. Okay, we are fascinated with the offense. We're going to talk a lot about the offense. We're going to give you a little sprinkling of this defense as well. They are improved at getting after the quarterback. They're not necessarily improved overall. Pretty bad tackling team and not a perfect and, and efficient zone football team as well. So we'll show you that. But we are here for sure to watch this offense Make sure you are hitting that thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribing to the network as well. All right. And make sure you're supporting us however in whatever way you possibly can. We appreciate you for being here. We got a saying around here. Let's shut up and let's grind the tape. All right. So first and foremost, let's take a look at this defense. Actually, first and foremost, let's get one of them things spinning. Okay. Hope everyone's doing great today. I'm doing fabulous. All right, so let's get after it. Who you are defensively on third down will kind of tell me who you want to be, right? Particularly third and five, first opportunity we get a look at it. We're going to take a look at what is a zone football team, okay? They look like they're playing some type of two high, maybe cover two or cover four, right? Either you got these curl flats over here or y'all are all playing quarters. Nonetheless, they are a zone football team. Do not see a bunch of man from this football team, but they are a pressure or at least a bringing four, oftentimes five, football team. Now, they're going to walk the look here in a second, but I would keep my eyes on four if we have an opportunity to pick one or the other. We're going to rush towards the freshman. Okay, Perkins is their guy, all right? He, he is their, their ideal prospect. He is their highest-rated prospect. I remember listening to Lane this, uh, this year going into the Alabama football game saying that he is the only football player on the field okay, that they beat Alabama out for in a recruiting battle. So just think about that, all right? But here you see they're going to drop one of those guys being the boundary guy, and they're going to rush four here on third and five. Again, they are a zone football team. We'll get a good look at it right here on the replay. Okay, here you go. To, here, here's the look, all right? Bunch of eyes on. They're going to give you a free rat player with this, this uh, free safety in the middle, all right? So not, not going to see a, a bunch of traditional two high looks from these guys. I see a lot of cover one or cover three, excuse me, uh, a lot of single high safety looks from these guys, as most football teams do nowadays because there's so much screen game, extension of their own game involved that you got to add a safety into the box in most cases, okay? Against 12 personnel, this is why I left this in the cut up, okay? One tight end, two tight ends from Auburn. This is 12 personnel. They will put one, two, and three linebackers on the field. That's important to note. Now, this is something that I don't think Georgia will run near as much as they would have in weeks past because obviously Brock Bowers is still off and out of the equation. So if you're going to play a base package, in other words, if you're going to play 4-3 personnel, uh, Georgia in, in years past would have absolutely obliterated you with vertical seam shots, different type of pass and vertical concepts with these two guys doing things like this. Nowadays, right, this ends up being Lawson Lucky and Oscar Delp. That looks a whole hell of a lot different than Darnell Washington and uh, Brock Bowers. We all understand that, right? But it was interesting to me when I turned the tape on, boom, 12 personnel, they hop in base, right? They're playing 
4-3 personnel. And there you see number four, again, adding into the mix right here as an additional rusher. Got to be able to account for him. Got to understand that if he's anywhere around the box, he's probably coming. If he's creeping towards the line of scrimmage, he's probably coming, right? Got to have eyes on four. Probably got to dot him in, in the pass protection, right? We got to circle him or put a little star over him in the pass protection no matter what. Also left this in the cutups because we see that middle field safety look, right? Even though they are a zone team, right? You guys, Georgia fans watched uh, that, that man pressure team last week for Missouri rock and roll their safeties. You're going to get a very similar look here from Ole Miss. This safety's playing in the rat. This safety is going to drop back. That corner's butts to the sideline. This corner's butts to the sideline as well. They're a cover three football team out of a split safety look. Going to show you middle of the field open pre-snap. Going to close it post-snap, especially based off whatever you do motion-wise. I would imagine if you remain in two by two, they're probably going to remain a middle field open football team. Keep both safeties out there, right? They're in two by two right now. Two receivers over here, two receivers over here. As soon as this motion's over, right? they're going to roll down and play middle field close. I would imagine if you give them a symmetrical look, they'll give you a symmetrical look as well, as most zone football teams tend to do. Okay? There's a primary example of it right here. Well, they're in three by one right there, but they're still giving you that off zone coverage look. All right, I left this on the cutups because the tackling is suspect. I know this is Galloway. I know this, I know this dude's really, really hard to tackle. I've seen him make uh, Georgia defenders miss out in space. But hey, that's six, right? That's one guy right there. That's two guys right there. That's three guys right there. That's four and five right there, and there's six. If it requires you six football players to tackle the quarterback, you have a problem in tackling, okay? Period, point blank. Let's go on to the offense. That's why everybody's here. All right, here we go. Everybody wants to know. I'm sure if you box score scout these guys, you'll go, damn, that Trey Harris guy. That Trey Harris guy, that Trey Harris guy. That's what we've been here. Tay Harris guy. We've been hearing about this all week, right? Hey, what are you going to do? Well, first of all, you got to find him. You're going to have to find this guy. You're going to play a little cat and mouse game with number nine. But also right here off the rip, all right, you're going to notice just how difficult and how complex this run scheme is going to be from Ole Miss. All right, right here at the mesh point, let's just take a look at everything that we could possibly be getting. We could be getting dive from the quarter or from the running back, right? We could also be getting uh, a little bit of counter from the quarterback, or we could be getting jet motion and jet toss or jet sweep rather with the quarterback. All right, there's a lot of things going on. Oh, also, by the way, we could also be getting play action, okay, levels from this look as well. Whole lot, whole lot going on right now. Bad week, bad week to have a, a freshman linebacker probably starting that inside linebacker because your starter in pop is going to be out with a, a, a broken arm, right? <clears throat> bad, bad news to have all this junk going on. Great news, you got one of the best defense coordinators in all of college football, okay? Maybe, not maybe, the best defense coordinator in all of college football in Glenn Schumann, okay? Heading up the, the, the uh, attack trying to get things right for this offense from Ole Miss because there is a lot to get right for. On to the very next play right here, okay? There's this thing they got called for a hold. They get called for a lot of holds, okay? I think this offensive line from Ole Miss is big, but they are very unathletic, okay? A lot of big uglies, not a lot of big sexies, a lot of big uglies. What's the difference? I'm a big ugly. Amarius Mims, big sexy. I think we all can identify the difference between those human beings. Correct? All right, class, we can move on. All right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Second and 15 right here. Hey, this quarterback, we talked about it. We made jokes about it, sneaky thick, all that good stuff. This dude will expose himself to hits. He will. He is not a slider. He is a diver. All right, so when he's out in space, okay, when we get shots on him on the run game as a defense, got to make them count. We got to hit this guy flush, okay? Cannot hit him, cannot hit him on the side, cannot clip him. We got to hit him flush, all right? We got to make him think twice about running the football, putting his body at ease, or putting his body in extensions like that, all right? That's what I would be telling my defense. Hey, we're playing within the whistles. We're playing clean, but do not treat this guy like a quarterback. He does not run like one. He runs like a running back, all right? He puts his body at risk. If he's going to do it, let's make him pay for it. Let's get some shots on him when he's out there in space, okay? And guess what, guys? He knows the deal. This is a, a, a two-year starter in the SEC, three-year starter in college football. He understands. What I don't get 
is when I see defensive coordinators who don't know what we know. Okay, we know third and seven. We know ball in plus territory. We know Lane Kiffin on the other sideline. We know you're playing two downs as a defense. Okay, you cannot, listen to me, offense, or listen to me, defense, listen to me, fans, okay? You cannot treat third down like it's third down this week. You cannot. The moment the ball is on the 40-yard line, they're on 40, okay? Going in, you got to treat third down like it's second down, all right? They are a four-down offense. So on third and seven, we cannot be in stand-up, off the ball, looking like we fitting to get a pass rush type shit, running up field. We can't do this. We cannot do this, all right? Because we have to play third down like it's second down, meaning they're definitely running the ball. They're definitely comfortable running the football in this situation, guys, because they know they got two downs. They know if, it, if they get into a fourth and four, they have the option to throw the ball, all right? So they're going to be willing to run the football. You cannot, cannot be out here thinking you got two-way goes, standing up, playing with high hats like you're rushing the passer, all right? Third down is second down against this offense. <coughs> Third down is second down against this offense. Great explosives. Got to limit this, man. Got to get this guy on the ground once he gets out there. Also, pay attention. Hey, this is tackle power. All right, they're going to pull the backside tackle. They're going to block out, block back, and ISO right here. And they're trying to get the, the uh, tackle up here on the Mike linebacker. They've also, via uh, spacing, done enough to flex this linebacker essentially out of the box right here. Although, uh, granted, it is third and seven, okay? It is third and seven. But nonetheless, a lot going on right there, but we cannot treat third down like it's second, or uh, third down like it's traditional third down. Look at this. Look at this. That's, that's A. We think we got a pass rush situation. That is not the case, fam. We got to play the run. We got to play the run right now. Here we go, third and 17. Another thing that I, they, man, these guys stress you no matter what. These guys stress you no matter what. Nine times out of 10, okay? Nine times out of 10, third and 17, ball at the middle of the field. Most offenses in college football, most are doing what, fan or uh, audience? Doing what, class? They are throwing a screen. They are running a draw. They are not putting the ball at risk. They're gonna go ahead and live for the punt. If something happens, something happens. Not this football team. This football team is going to stress you, press you, and, and make you think, make you cover all four downs, no matter what, all right? Which means back shoulder fades, bombs away, all right? And they get a P.I. right here. They get bailed out on the road, okay, on their first drive here on third and 17. You have to understand, guys, you're going to be stressed. If you're on the field defensively, you are ready to rock, all right? They are coming after you at all times, okay? No matter what, even when you think you got them, all right, and you think you got an advantage on them. Now, here's where I, I would never, ever, ever, okay, worry about Georgia, okay? It's out in the flats, okay? I'm telling you right now, speed sweeps, jet sweeps, all this stuff, uh, extensions of the run game, uh, screen passes out in the flats. I, I've seen maybe one or two, maybe one or two this year that have explosives afterwards. This is nine times out of 10 what happens. If all it requires is for me to be physical out on the edge, Guess who's the most physical out on the edge football team in terms of defensive backs in the country? You guessed it, Georgia. I'd put Oregon in a close second, okay? Those guys are out of the football. These guys are out of the football. It's SEC big time speed matchup out there in space. But this is a keep you honest method from Ole Miss. They just want to stretch you so they can press you. Stretch you so they can press you. That's what they want to do, okay? They want to get you stretched horizontally so they can explosively hit you vertically, okay? explosively hits you vertically. But again, if all you got to do is play physical out on the edge, we're fine. But here's my problem, right? Third and seven right here on the road, loud as piss out there at Auburn, right? Now, I know you say what you want. I just got done talking to an old Miss coach, believe it or not, who was like, I mean, but we, we played at Auburn. And I said, you know, Auburn is loud. Auburn is definitely loud at night. But here, here's the difference. Okay, y'all can say Jordan Harris crazy. It's got a bunch of magic and Ole Miss fans that have found this. Welcome in. Hit that like, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. Okay, Auburn is nuts. Auburn is crazy. Auburn's 500. Y'all come into a place that ain't lost a football game in a, in, a, in a half a decade. All right, longer than that. Now, nah, it's been half a decade. It's been half a decade since this program has lost a home game. All right, 
and way longer than that since they lost the night game. So it's, it's going to be plenty loud. And here's my thing with this offense. It's very motion-based. It's very dressing-based. It's very check-with-me based. It's very standing at the line of scrimmage based. And when you're doing that, and when 93,000 are screaming their heads off, all right, and it's 730, and it's midway through the second quarter, one score ball game, this is going to happen a lot. All right, it's going to happen a lot. There's going to be a lot of false starts and a lot of uh, key situations where I, you cannot. This, this is not an offense that simplifies their game plan. This is an offense that is very, again, motion-based, gimmicky-based, dressing-based. And it's hard to have all that extra dressing when you're on the road. Okay, really, really hard to have all that dressing when you're on the road. Now, here's the hard part for our defenses that are playing this football team. There's two plays. You got to be able to cover them. All right, you got to be able to put, cover them. Great job right here from Auburn covering them. But here's the second part of the play. You got to get number two down. All right, you got to get number two down. And if you can't get this guy down, all right, he is going to extend drives. He is going to, uh, you know, make plays with his feet. Auburn gets bailed out here thanks to a holding call again from the right tackle. Guys, I think this offensive line is, again, real big, all right, but they are extremely unathletic in comparisons to what they're going to get from Georgia's defensive line this weekend, all right? Georgia's loaded down with a bunch of athletes. You guys know this. Um, let's see here. It's a, a good look at the stretch zone play. Georgia saw stretch and, and wide zone this weekend from Missouri. You're going to get a, a, a football team that runs a little bit of it as well from Ole Miss. It's Judkins is the one who's going to give it to you, all right? From what I've seen from this football program, he's their wide zone, stretch zone back. The other backs are used to do all the other stuff. Here's a good look at it. All right, we're going to get this back on this track. Whenever he sees grass, he is directed to get his foot in the ground and work up. Everybody's going to work a gap over, all right, and we're going to get on this kind of 45-degree angle, and all we're trying to do is push, 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 reach and seal, all right, and at one point, at some point, there is going to be an alley that gets created. The back's job is to stick his foot in that ground and get into that alleyway, all right? Judkins does a really good job of doing exactly that right here on this play. Take a look. There you see the alley open up. Great job, 54, of getting up after that combination block. Watch 54 right here from Ole Miss. Great job right there, whoever's calling this game, getting that ID on the spot. Great job on the bump over, all right? And getting that licked, okay? Now again, hey, four down territory. This is a football team that's gonna be getting after it on fourth and one. You are playing four downs, guys. You're playing four downs as a defense. Just get prepared for it. Just get prepared for it, all right? Can't be getting sucked in like this as, as an edge defender. Also, the linebacker play for Auburn was atrocious in this football game. Some of the worst linebacker play I've seen in a minute. And here's an example of it. This poor guy. Lane's just toying with this dude at this point. Watch what this does to number 30. This man's putting a spin cycle. This poor guy. I couldn't imagine. All right, he runs out here. He's like, all right, I got jet motion. Oh, there goes the return. Shit, I fell down. All right, down. Oh, shit. Here comes quarterback jet sweep my way. Like, that's tough, man. That's tough to, to deal with, to have all this extra motion, all this extra dressing, all right, and then to have to rally to the football and get it tackled. Great job, number 13. Team speed's important this weekend. Team speed's important this weekend. I don't know how good they are outside of the, the, the stretch zone play, okay? I don't know how, how good they are at lining up and just getting you inside. All right, just saying, all right, here's inside zone. All right, or here's standard zone. It's a lot of dressing to get those vertical hits, all right? Um, so team speed's important this weekend. Team speed is important this weekend. Also, playing the full snap is important this weekend because these guys dial you up in the red zone. This is a little hezzy right here from number five. All right, they're going to force a switch release here. All right, they're going to run 85 vertical. All right, and at this mesh point, they're going to show face, meaning number five is going to show face the dart, pause for a second, and then get going vertically again right here. This is an automatic winner for this Ole Miss offense in the red zone if you're going to play like this, number four. Okay, got to play the full snap, can't get lazy. Got to play the full snap. Okay, this defense or this offense, all right, they're going to test your eye discipline. You guys know this. Now, here's one thing I've noticed about Pete Golden defenses. The last, like, three years I've studied, dude, dating back to the last couple years at Alabama and now, um, man's just alignment. From a basic alignment standpoint, makes me really, really, like, confused. All right, that's a prime example. 
They have one defensive tackle out here, one defensive end, and the safety's all the way back here at the damn, what's that, the 45. So he's 15 yards deep all the way back there. All right, now all Auburn did was flip the back, and that brought the linebacker all the way over here. So now we have a center, a guard, and a tackle, all right, and you as a defensive uh, unit have one defensive lineman, one defensive lineman, and a safety. That's it. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to hand that rock right there on third and six. Uh, and we're going to get a massive, massive explosive right here uh, on this play. Okay, and again, hey, he's really talented, but this is a bad, bad angle from number four. All right, we never, ever want shrink space on this play. All right, and you're going to see it from the backside. And he had the wrong quarterback in there as well to not be shrinking space. Uh, I don't think I gave you the replay. That's on me. But either way, you see him right here? Okay, actually, he's actually right here. Watch him. Down set hut. We're going to get a camera flip. Down set hut. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Down set hut. Camera flip for me. All right, there's the camera flip. Here he is. Okay, we're, we're a yard deep now, and watch how he never really squeezes. Okay, we got to squeeze. Not only are we not squeezing, we're floating backwards. We got to squeeze, and we got to get flat. Okay, go. Go, 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 go. Okay, boom, we're just a hair late. And just a hair late kind of defines most freshmen, and that's okay. That's okay. He's going to be much, much better, okay, as the years progress. I think he's a really good football player. Speaking of a really good football player, holy hell, what a ball. Okay, they're running Fox screen right here. Okay, they're going to act like they're blocking, act like they're running the bubble, but in reality, they're trying to hit the wheel right here from the tight end. All right, this is why it's always been important for Lane to have, like, super freaks at the tight end position. I don't think he has that right now. Um, this is just a big body. He helps out in the run game. He blocks really, really well, okay, but he's not really a space creator, okay, in the, uh, in the passing game right now, which requires absolute dots from Jackson Dart. What a tremendous football right here from Jackson Dart. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. I doubt, I highly, highly doubt you see different levels of pass rush like this from Georgia. Georgia has never, ever had this bad of pass rush integrity, okay? That's the defensive end. That's the defensive tackle, okay? So, yeah, a mobile quarterback sees this lane, and he's going to occupy it, I promise you right now, every single time. From as long as football will be played, if you rush an athletic quarterback with that, with that lack of discipline, he is going to run into those voids. I promise you right now. I thought Auburn cleaned this up as the game progressed, but, dude, he's going to get out into space if you leave him the opportunity to do so. We have got to, got to, got to rush this guy with proper integrity as a defense. So much to defend. Fourth and one. Again, you're playing four downs. You're playing four downs. We've seen him go for a fourth down three times in two drives right here. All right. So here's the deal. They're going to give you, I believe, a jet. Yep. They're going to give you a jet motion. Watch this. All right. So here comes the jet. Down set hut. Boom. Now they're going to give you a fake toss to Judkins. All the meanwhile, they've got quarterback counter right here in B-gap on the front side as well. There is so much from this Ole Miss defense, or from this Ole Miss offense, particularly in the run game, to defend. And it starts with stopping this, okay? If you're gonna be able uh, to beat Georgia, Ole Miss, you gotta be able to run the football. We all know this, everybody knows this. It's why I think you had problems against Alabama. It's why uh, teams historically don't beat Georgia because they can't run the football. But you have enough dressing, you do enough to stretch defenses, okay, once this guy gets done drawing this, you do enough to stretch defenses that I can respect, okay, and believe that you're going to be able to run the football come Saturday because all of this really, really impacts defenders. All of this. It really, really peels this front side of this defense and all these down blocks really set up our crease right there in front side B-gap on this quarterback power. Boom. So much, so much to defend. Um, but here's the other thing, all right? Jackson Dart has four interceptions on the year, all four on the road. And they're like, a lot of them are inexplicable. Like this right here. The dude's so dialed. 
like 20 yards or, or further. I think he's breaking Ole Miss records right now. He's bre breaking Lane Kiff pass or Lane Kiff and passing records. Okay, on balls 25 yards or, th or further down the field, like this ball right here. But this makes no sense. He misses this ball three yards over this left shoulder of this uh, wide receiver, and I can't explain it. I can't. Explain. The only thing I can think of is maybe he got a little too leany on it. Watch. Okay. Boom. Right there, we get a little bit too tilted on our axis. Okay. Instead of staying with our shoulders flat. And we end up sailing a football. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. Can't really explain it. But the turnovers are there. The turnovers are very obvious and apparent, okay, on the road. Let's see if we can do these no notes here. Ah, uh, this is the run sequence. Okay. This is the run sequence. And this is H insert. All right. H insert. It's a little Tennessee run play. I know it's not Tennessee's run play. All right. But Tennessee runs it the most. All right, we're going to actually run zone with everybody. All right, the offensive line's blocking standard inside zone to the left. We're going to take the H back, and we're going to insert him right over the ball where there's a natural bubble and crease, all right, over the, uh, the center. Boom, get him up there on the mic, all right, and now we got everybody licked. We got a 10-yard little hitter right there with just a nice little H back insert. Get right back on the football. I love this, this, uh, this series right here from uh, Ole Miss. Because it, it shows me a little something. It shows me who you are as a football team. On the road, 14 to 14, fourth possession of the football game. And look at you. You fitting to get on that rock, and you fitting to run it. All right, H, a uh, little power, tackle power right here, pulling the backside tackle. All right, getting him onto the front side, adding him into the equation. That's all you're really doing, okay? We're trying to manipulate the run count. Look, the Mike linebacker's all the way over here. There's nobody over here in this space. So what do we do as an offense? Well, we block back everybody. We insert, all right, and we pull the backside tackle and add him into the front side of this run play. Now we got an extra hat on the front side of the play. Boom. It's beautiful. Look at that. Boom. Now the safety has to come down, make the play at plus five. And now we're adding the safety into the box, right? We're doing all these things to help out with our verticality as an offense. Here's what I love about Lane. All right, Lane, if something works, guess what, guys? He's going to hop right back on the ball, and he's going to do the shit again. All right, he is very hard-headed in the sense that if something works, we ain't going to get away from it. So whatever happens to start breaking on Saturday for Ole Miss, whatever starts happening to work, understand something. You're going to get it again. All right, whether it be their call for NASCAR is what we used to have. NASCAR, NASCAR, NASCAR. Get right back on the ball. We're trying to play fast, do it again, all right? They get right back on the ball. This is five run plays in a row. Now you're getting the stretch zone, right? So he, he, he hits you with the H-back insert, right? He hits you with the uh, tackle power. And now all of a sudden, Judkins comes into the play. And now you're getting wide zone. Man, so much stuff you have to defend right here on the spot. They're going to hop right back on the football, okay, here on this next snap. And they're going to run the ball again, all right? They're going to run the ball again right here just after five or six seconds of letting you breathe and get set up. Judkins is now going to be a special player. A little standard inside run. This is what I'm talking about when I say, hey, no gimmicks, no dressing, no nothing. All you're going to do is have to line up and run the football. They don't do it so successfully just doing that stuff. It requires Quinshawn to be really, really special. All right, so now they're going to line up. They're going to give you a little truck into the boundary. Truck toss into the boundary. By the way, guys, seven run plays in a row right now for this offense, and they're going to rip off a nine-yard gain right now in the red zone. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to hop right back on the ball, and they're going to run it again. Okay? They're going to run it right again. Now, this time Auburn stuffs them with it, but I'm just trying to show you, hey, they are diligent. They are, they are going to make you stop something, okay, if you have shown the inability to to do so. Third and goal right here. I left this on the clip because I'm going to tell you right now, okay, their 35 has a hell of a speed rush, but their 35 ain't got nothing on the speed rush that 11 and 35 for Georgia have, okay? Saturday, third and long, Jalen Walker, uh, Damon Wilson, going to eat. I do not, do not, do not, do not, do not believe these tackles can hold up in pass protection against this Georgia unit. They're too fast. They're too twitchy. They're too athletic. Jackson Dart, however, can do stuff like this. So once he gets the ball out of his hands, guess what? You guessed it. Rally and tackle. Rally and tackle. Rally and tackle. Hey, talk about Tay Harris. I told you we're going to get to him eventually. I don't think he's – this is going to sound crazy. He is not the key to stopping this football team. He is the key to their bailouts, to their explosives, to their – Holy shit, like the Ferrari is fully running. All right, but if you want to make them drive a Honda Accord on Saturday, stop the run. All right, if, if, if they're really their version of themselves, this guy's getting loose. But 
the real reality is you got to be able to stop the, all the all the magic in the run game first. All right, but you can see why this guy does have 750 or whatever it is yards. All right, he's going to live in the slot. He's going to hang out in here. He is their big shot playmaker. All right, I think he's averaging north of 20 yards of reception this year, and you can see why right here. They're going to get him on a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, okay, on this deep corner, and it's a really, really deep corner. He's the only read on the play, and they're going to try to get it to him, and they barely miss him. <clears throat> I think it's their first, uh, first pass to him all game, okay? In this ball game, I think he was four for buck fifty. Okay, one one fingertip short of five for buck seventy. You see what I'm saying? He is a big shot playmaker. You got to cover him the five times he's going to get the football. But here, here's why I, I just don't. I don't ever see Georgia do this stuff on tape. Never, never, ever, ever do I just see. All right, well, okay, out of empty, I understand you're gonna you're gonna bring pressure here, but. Somebody's going to replace, right? Like somebody's going to drop and, or, or somebody's going to replace. Somebody's going to replace this massive void in the middle of the field on a two-minute drill right before the half. So, somebody's going to replace, right? No, no. Nobody replaces. Got a tight end standing in the middle of the field. Now all of a sudden, 30-yard ripper. Oh, look. Shit. Ole Miss is in field goal range. Like, duh. I never, I never see this stuff from good defenses. I don't. I don't. It just don't make no sense. Great job by Jackson, though, identifying also uh, the pursuit on this play. A little bit questionable upon replay. Thank you, Kay and Lee, for playing hard, pursuing the football. So here we go. Back on the rock. Uh, here's a actual disciplined pass rush from Auburn. Look at them push the pocket. Look, nobody rushing past him. Nobody rushing past him. Rushing to him. Okay, push it into him. All right, make him hold the football, trust us to cover. He might sack himself, which is exactly what he does right here. Now, this is the other thing that I noticed about this dude. Bro gets hit so hard. So, so, so hard. He holds the ball really, really long, all right? And he is athletic, but he takes hits, man. He takes big, massive hits. Hey, I don't know how long we've gone, um, but we are done for the day here on the What to Expect episode from Ole Miss. Uh, if you enjoyed what you've seen, all right, if you're like, dang, it's refreshing to hear a bunch of football talk, guess what? We do it every single Monday through Thursday live, 8 to 10 p.m. here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're hitting that bell button, thumbs up, like, rate, and review, and all that good stuff. Hey, I love you. We'll see you next time. Absolutely sprayed. Just at 32 minutes.